The Schubert's house was a place of love, heartbreak and family for many years. William and Hildegard met in Germany in the 1940s, just before the start of World War II. Despite the turmoil of the time, they fell in love and decided to get married. After the war, the Schubert's were disillusioned by the actions of their country and decided to start a new life in the United States. William was a talented young man and started his own construction company, while Hildegard took care of the children. At first they had two children, but later in life a third child was born. The Schuberts lived happily in their home until William ultimately died. Hildegard was devastated by their loss of her husband, but she was determined to keep the family together and to keep their home running smoothly. She took on extra work and sacrificed her own happiness to provide for the children. As the years passed, Hildegard became elderly and needed extra care. Despite her declining health, she refused to leave the home she and William had built together. She lived out her rest of her days in the house, surrounded by memories of her loved ones, until her own passing in 1995. She lived out the rest of her days in the house, surrounded by memories of her loved ones, until her own passing in 1995. For one last time, we will give you a glimpse into their lives and make their story eternal. There we are again, everybody. Welcome back to the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie. As usual, behind the camera, Danny. Say hi, hello, man. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. And we are again in the state of... Oh, no. We are in New Jersey right now. A new state. Have you already explored a house in New Jersey? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. The one with all the blue paint. I will exactly. link it up here. But we're going to explore a very interesting home today of William and Hildegard. As you just heard from the story, they came from Germany and they, yeah, they made a new life over here in the United States, like a lot of people have done back in that time period. And here we see the first clue of their new life. Alpauk, that was William, his construction company that he started when they came over to the United States. He had this construction company for decades until he eventually retired and everything is still left here, like you see. This was his construction company, this was a truck that he used to go to the customers. So everything is still here, even the engine is still in it, but the tires, for some reason, have been stripped off. And these must have been the barns where William stored all his equipment for his company. I don't think, yeah, these have been completely overgrown by nature. We're gonna not be able to open those up. Maybe from the back, there's a possibility. I see a little window to the side over there. Oh yeah, they're completely open at the back. They have just been deteriorating since 1995 when this place got abandoned. Oh my God, Danny, look at that. This is his Whole tractor. tractor. Wow. Okay, I think we can go into the barn over here. Oh, maybe give the camera to me. I can show William his tractors. I'm just wondering why he needed those tractors. Maybe this was also for his construction company or he might do some farm work on the side as well. Those things are unclear for me. Look at the dartboard, there in the corner. And here behind is another tractor of Mr. William. Wow. These are vintage machines. Look at that metal seat on there. Definitely very interesting. Oh, even a little cabinet. 
low here. There you go, Danny. And then we have to be careful because this is about to fall apart. Whoa, okay, back out there. I saw something at the end. Oh, there are a couple more cars down here as well. Look in there. So many cars left behind in this place. That's a vintage machine. William himself was a big collector or a big fan of old and vintage cars. I'm not sure what brand that this one is. Maybe I can go over it. Give the people a closer look at this one as well. Yep, thank you. This was one of William, his vintage cars. The peek inside of it has been rusting away over here for decades. Oh, 9,000 9, kilometers, 9,000 miles on the odometer. That's absolutely nothing. And it still looks in a very good condition on the inside, even though all the dust. Here you can see the engine. Probably if you start it up, it will just run. All the gardening equipment is also in here. And a very nice upholstery chair right next to us here. Look at that beauty. Oh, it shouldn't be standing here over in this garage. This should be preserved. Oh, okay. Lovely. Again, Annie. There you go. You have to be a real monkey to explore these places and to crawl through everything. Yes. I think this was one of the last cars that they used inside of this place. This was probably Hildegard, his last car, her last car, excuse me. Look how the tree branches have literally grown throughout the engine bay. Oh my gosh. The tree is literally taking over this car. That's absolutely insane. And this is kind of a new car, I would say. From that era, from the time that the place got abandoned. And back there are a couple more cars and a couple more things spread throughout the backyard. And another tractor, of course. Okay, I think it's time that we go inside of the place and see how these people lived, see what their story was, and maybe we can puzzle something, something together even more than we already know about them. Oh my God, Danny, I'm struggling going through here. I'm really struggling. But here you can see the backside of their wonderful place. I'm very eager to go in there. Very, very eager. There are a couple of things about this house that I really love. First and foremost, you can see down there, the stones, the big stones, where they constructed it on the foundation. You don't see this very often in the United States. Mostly everything is made out of concrete or out of wood. And they also had a water well down here. So they probably produced all their own water through rainwater. It's still filled. And then over here, you can see the complete exposed stone. Absolutely love this design. This is very, very French, I would say, or very European to have these kinds of stones. But these stones were for the chimney that you can see up there. So not the whole house is made out of wood, just a small, uh, made out of stone, just a very small part of the house is made out of stone. Okay, let's go in. Let's go inside this place. Let's see what's left behind in here. Oh. Knock, 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 knock. Welcome. So we ended up in the kitchen of Hildegard and William and the children, of course, that used to live here. But as you can see, this room and the dining room are a complete mess. I promise you, the rest of the house is gonna be fantastic. Only these two rooms are a big mess. But I still wanna show you a couple of things inside of these rooms. As you can see, in 1995, when Hildegard left, everything was left with her disappearance, with her passing away. All the pots and pans where she last cooked with are still there. 
and even the dishes are still in the drying rack. Is this a refrigerator? Frigidere. Oh no, it's an oven. <laughs> a frigidere. Oh, of course, it says oven above here. I thought it was a refrigerator. <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. But here we see the calendar. And it says 1995. The eighth month, that's, uh, that's August, right? Yeah, that's August. And I say, the 9th of August, happy Nana. Happy grandma. the grandma, yeah. And Mr. Shu. This is a beautiful calendar. I think it's from Germany. Yeah, this is a calendar from Germany. This is Bergen says, this is Oberst Landes, Eiger, Monche, and Jahrfrau. Yes, they got to Germany and they bought this calendar over there or they, they just bought it online because they miss their home country a lot. And I must say, Germany is a beautiful country. Okay, let's have a look through here. There are a lot of letters still lying on the ground that were sent to Mrs. Hildegard. As you can see, handwritten letters all left behind. And this is in German, if I'm right, yeah. Zu Spezialtik geworden, das offen mal. I'm not very good at reading cursive, so I'm not gonna do it properly, but you can see this letter is from 1971, completely written in German. Wow. And there are even more letters lying here on the ground that have all been sent to Mrs. Hildegard. <laughs> Look at this, it's one of those electric scooters. Oh, yeah. They were like the ones you see in Walmart where people are driving around yeah. on. <laughs> but Mrs. Hildegard at the end of her lifetime, or at the last years of her lifetime, she was a bit disabled. We're gonna see it throughout the house. Disabled, I shouldn't say, but she was in bad health and she couldn't move around that well anymore at the last years of her life. Okay. And this, like I told you, was the dining area. Also completely overthrown, a lot of junk in here. There's a couple of things that we can look at. For example, the lovely copper plate that's still on the wall there. And then right below it, have a look at the tile around the fireplace. It's magnificent. Postage cards. These have not been written. They have never been written. She probably bought them on a journey somewhere in the world and then wanted to write them to somebody but never did so. I believe this is in Florida. Which is still a very far away from here. Look at this glass display cabinet that we have in front of us here. It's still filled with Mrs. Hildegard, her, uh, her most beloved dishes, her most beloved china. All the crystal your glasses are still in here. Everything's preserved. Ooh. Lufthansa, the German flight company. Boeing Jet 747. That's lovely. Oh, and even her perfumes are still left here. Cologne spray. I always want to have a smell. Oh, that's lovely. Exactly how Mrs. Hildegard would have smelled back in the time. No, it just it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> but then, welcome inside of their living space, their living room. I, to my opinion, one of the most beautiful rooms of this entire house. Wow, and then we start off with the first piece of furniture. And that's a piece of furniture that we see a lot coming back in the United States. It's a record player, right? Uh, I've not opened it. Danny, you've seen it, right? Yep. Uh, do I open it like up? Fold it open like this. Uh, let's see. No, 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 no. no. Just, th just that. Oh, oh, it's down below here. I thought I would lift this up. No, no, no. Ah, you see, there it is, the record player, where they would play tunes on when they were sitting here in the living area, enjoying themselves, and then this record player make for a nice atmosphere inside the house. And this is a radio above it, if I'm not wrong. Yep. A stereophony sound system. Very lovely piece. 
and then you could close it all up and it would make for an awesome cabinet when you were not playing any music. World War II. Like we see, the World War II and the things that happened in Germany never left their, ha their lives. It, it followed them through their entirety. They escaped to Germany, uh, to the United States probably, to escape the things that happened in Germany. But we can never forget events like this and for them it must have been very, very terrible. Reader's Digest. We have over here a lovely book. Which country is this, Danny? Germany. <laughs> of course. Hand braided probably and I recognize this town, but I, I, I know it from the features, but I cannot directly say which town it is. Lovely braided in there. Mozart we have over here. Oh, I dropped something. Oh, what's that? It's a postage card. We have a little notebook as well. It's not a notebook. Kaufrein Gilbert. Ah, it's a German book. It's lovely. Okay. And then we have this cabinet over here, completely filled with books at the top. Most, a lot of books in here are German, as you can see, and even a German encyclopedia, I believe. No, encyclopedia of nature and health. Sorry, I thought it was German. But the Natur Health. This is the German version of this one. The, the health of nature, it says on there. And even a yearbook from 1976. Yearbook of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. Yearbook of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Interesting. Maybe they were part of that society as well. Oh, let's close this up. And down below, we have a lovely secretary desk. Look at that. Everything is still in here. Hildegard and William used to do all their accountancies. They would write their letters on here, write books and everything. There are even still some posted stamps left behind on here. What? What are you laughing well, at? Nothing. <laughs> I thought you were laughing at me, Danny. <laughs> Did I say something? Just trying else? to not cough in the oh, video. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, Danny. Yeah, it's a bit dusty inside of this house, I would say. Instructions for operating power takeoff pulleys. Okay, that's definitely something from William, from his construction company. Some manuals. See, like I told you, they would do all their work on top of here. Okay. Lovely. Then another sitting area over there. A beautiful upholstery chair that has unfortunately been deteriorating over the years. What piques my interest is that there is straw inside of the chair for filling. I've walked over the exact same bridge when I was in Germany. Exact same. So it might, I might have walked over that bridge, that exact bridge. And then over here, we have a lot of pictures of the people left behind. You can see a lot of group photos, maybe from the time when they lived back in Germany still. Amazing pictures, vintage ones. This might have been our beloved Heidegard. Picture of two men together. Wow, so many things. A lot of these pictures are postage cards, as you can see. Maybe they did that themselves, but I'm not sure. And over here, we got a picture of a lovely child. And I think this might have been one of their children that got older and uh, they had a child of themselves. This is definitely not William or Heidegard. Definitely not. I love these types of pictures. Wow. And here we got another family picture. Okay. William, as you can see, was a big fan of automotive things, all things automotive and vintage cars as well. I believe, no, I'm not sure about the brand, but I think it's a Peerless that says over here an auto car down below. I'd first want to say that it was a Ford Model T, but it's definitely not. A huge horse carriage wheel, a horse couch wheel, still left there. In the middle of the living area. Oh, this is very, very heavy. 
Pops Festival. It's finals. What are those? Oh, these are all vinyls. Wow. This cabinet is made for vinyls. Really? Yeah. Maybe you should have a look inside of it. Oh, <laughs> it's completely filled. It's amazing. Here they come. That looks like an old piece. Lovely vinyl. It's completely filled. They were definitely also big music lovers, as you can see. Oh, another town, Germany today. Modern love songs by Wolfgang Sauer. These are all German songs. They definitely were looking back to their heritage a lot of times. They probably didn't want to move out of Germany, but they, got, they probably felt like they were forced to do so at some point. They, can still, they still have a lot of love for their home country. Here we have, of course, the American reclining chair where William or Heidegard used to rest in at the end of their day. And that, like we can see, they could fully recline the chair and put it back. We don't have chairs like that in Europe. Oh, we do, but not as much as here in the United States. I'm always fascinated when the lamp is devoured like that. I, that might have been done by animals. I don't think humans did that. That's just time. And then that television setup, with above there, some negative pictures. Wow. Can we see what's on there? That might have been William, sitting in a lake somewhere. And here he's rowing a boat. Even more books down below here. Okay. <laughs> Again, a lovely poster over here with these vintage cars. And then, Danny, we have this side of the room, which is my absolute favorite. The setup the seat to the side and a piano right next to it. I'm curious to see if this one still plays. Oh, it retracts in there. No, 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 no. Just like this. Just like this? Yep. Okay. Yeah, some keys do still mm. play after two decades, more than two decades even. Mm. Almost three decades. W.M. Knabe and Corporation, established in 1837. A very old piano company. Huh. Where's this map from? Greenwich. Oh, this seems to be from England. Highbridge. Yeah, this is Greenwich Main Time. This is the time where we base the world's time on. That's the place. This is from England. <laughs> of course. American people, uh, uh, German people also cannot live without their liquors. Carolands, we have over here finest cream liquor. And then the couch where they used to sit on together in the evening. The lovely clock above there. What a beauty. I also love these curtains that can lead us into the next room of the house. Oh, there we are. Let's go into the hallway. Next section of the house. And this is also a very interesting section. Then he just walked into the room where Hildegard, the woman of the house, last slept. And literally everything from her, from her last years inside of the house, is still here. So beforehand, of course, she used to sleep upstairs together with her husband, William. But at the end, last years of her life, she wasn't a bad health and she had to move her bed downstairs. I don't know if Hildegard would live here alone, but it seems like it. It seems like she would just have somebody would came in and help her out, but for the most part, she would live alone. We can see on her nightstand over here, a lot of things that indicate her bad health. We have coughing syrup, we have fixed formula, and we have some other medical products, and even a pack of cigarettes is left behind here. Latex gloves are lying here. This trash can is standing here. And then, of course, these chairs are 
How, what's the exact name for them, Danny? Do you? I don't know. I think these are... In English, I don't know. A chamber pot would be in here, but uh, there are chairs to do your duty. That's how I'm going to describe it. And she would do that inside of her room. And I, yeah, this is definitely a diaper from her. And everything of that is still left behind. And that's why I see that she, that she was in a bad health at the end of her life. A lovely drawer over to this side. I think this might have been the hat of William that's still lying here. Looks like a very luxurious piece. Mm, yeah. Even still some leather in there. And I love these crests that we have on it. A product of Adam. Lovely plastic flowers as well lying there. A couple of napkins on top of here. Oh, this is the same chair as we saw in the living room. Wow. Is this a reclining chair? No, no, no. This one is not. It's just a lovely chair. And her shoes, her high heels, are also still standing neatly in front of that chair. Isn't that just lovely? Oh. Mrs. Hildegard, her handbags still lying next to the drawer over to this side. And this over here, Danny, was her jewelry box. Her earrings and everything still in there. Here she would choose from what she would want to wear during the day. A lovely box, but even a drawer at the bottom of it. No, it's just a couple of things in there. Okay, lovely box. Wow. Arham Han Company. Fruits, huh? Could there be fruits inside of here? This looks like a cigar box to me. There's nothing in there anymore, unfortunately. And then I was really intrigued by these postcards that we have on top of here. We can see a man and he's making like a porcelain, porcelain statues over here and artworks. This is again from Germany, German writing on there. Johannes Meyer, the Volks, uh, the, the the people, the person who made art for the people, it says over here. Wow. Oh, even her night dress is still left here. Wow. And then, of course, to this side, Mrs. Hildegard was a real lady. She had her own vanity, of course. Everything is still on there. You can see her deodorants, her perfumes, and everything. And down here are even still some letters directed to her, left behind. Here we can see Schubert Hildegard, a letter directed to her in 1900 somewhere. Wow, these are, this is a bank a letter from the bank, all still left here. <laughs> no, nothing anymore in the piggy bank. <laughs> and here also her alarm clock is still left here. This is one you would wind up. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Does it still function? No, it doesn't seem to function anymore. No, it's broken. Lovely vanity though. Absolutely enjoy it. <laughs> Look at that. It's a chair on wheels. And I don't know why this is here or why they constructed it because this is, as you can see, made by William himself or by Hildegard himself, herself. But I have no clue what somebody would do with a chair on wheels like that. Very interesting. One last glance at the bed before we go. Lovely made bed. And this brings us back into the hallway of the house. Danny, before we go upstairs, I also want to show the people the basement of the place. So let's head over there. Oh, there's a couple of things over here as well that I really adore. For example, this shoe spoon. We would call it in Dutch. I don't know the exact name of it in English, but look at that. There's even a crocodile at the end of it. Lovely piece. It's very dirty though. Even our knitting equipment is left behind. Okay. Another cabinet completely filled with lovely plates. But let's head over to the basement. Ah. Okay. Are you willing to go first? 
Watch out, I have just made a venturement in through the basement. No, I'm gonna let you see it. I'm gonna let you see. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil anything. Okay. Let's go into the basement. It's the light. Up here they stored also some things. Watch out, there's a cable down below here. As Jeez. you can see, there's a lot of things in here. This used to all be used, all the jars were used for food storage. And the smell is terrible, I would yeah, say. the smell is terrible. But the smell comes sure. from over there. Can I show the people? There's a dead raccoon literally lying there on the floor. Okay, don't want to go too close. Got these lovely vintage uh, freezer over here and a fridge as well. Okay, Danny, I need to go out of this basement. It's yeah. absolutely it's dirty nice. in here. Just wanted to briefly show this. now but first have a look at this lovely hallway here the people came inside we have the chandelier still hanging here or the lantern as you would say and then this was the front entrance up there you can see all the spider webs from the decades of abandonment the decades that nobody has been inside of this house and this stairway over here is gonna take us up to the top floor I love the carpet on there Okay, let's go up, let's have a look. I'm really intrigued by the room that we see in front of us, Danny. Let's go in there first, but first have a look when you enter into the room, how it's designed, the shape over here on the door. I, I think this part of the house has been added on later because you can see this is definitely not made like architecturally. They just cut it out and then they made perhaps an extra room over in this side of the house. Wow. It's also strange how it's designed over there. You can literally look over it into the, the room. kitchen. Right? This is a side room. This is, this is a room that we haven't seen yet. The kitchen is on that side. Oh. Yeah. Now we got these two very old beds still standing here. Lovely woodwork on them. The broken, like the still made blankets on there, but completely broken and devoured over time. Even some excrements of animals on top of it. And I think this would have been their washing bin. Like all the dirty clothes they would put inside of here. And then when it was time to wash them, they would take it downstairs to the basement. Lovely design. And this one as well. Okay. Even have the sitting corner over here. This beautiful upholstered bench right behind there. Love the design on that one. Oh. We've got these lovely letters that we have on top of here. And this one is directed to Robert Schubert. And Robert is a name that we have not seen inside of the place. Here's another one directed to Robert Schubert. That might have been the son of them that lived inside of this room. Yeah, I love these letters. The design with the, black, with the red, white and blue on there. Typical American letters. The stamp. Seven cents it used to cost to send a letter over. Seven cents. Oh, and also one more thing. We have this bar uh, of this tube of toothpaste. Oh no, this is for hair loss. I love these old advertisements. Absolutely adore them. Even more of those letters lying here on top of the table. Now we've got this drawer slash 
vanity combination because you have a little mirror on top of there. There's nothing in here anymore. Yeah, it seems to be completely empty. But I see a stairway down here and I have absolutely no clue where this one goes to. Very narrow stairway. Oh! <laughs> this stairway literally leads into the dining area. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Okay, but we have already been there, so there's no need to go again to the dining area. Let's close this door up again. Let's go further. Okay, I definitely believe that this part of the house has been constructed again later on. Whew, let's go over to that side. Okay, let's see this section first. I see a very beautiful room to the left of mine, but that's where we're gonna save that one to the last. Let's first focus on this side of the hallway. I love the light switches that they have in here, Danny. Have a look at that. Beautifully designed. It's porcelain, right? Yep. It's amazing. And then the oven standing up here. For some reason, there is an oven on the top floor. But then over here, we have their bathroom. Beautifully designed bathroom. Lovely pink walls, the tile and everything. Isn't that just fascinating? And even back there, there's still a towel hanging. Ooh, what's in here? Ah, oh, here we have it again. The slot for the razors. Ah. Once before we showed in another abandoned house, like what's behind there, because people used to put their razors always in that disposal area over here. And here's a little clip of what's behind a mirror like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Down below here, we have a very strange toilet. As you can see, it's unlike anything I've seen before, but even the toilet paper is also still left here. And that always gives me an indication like this is a true time capsule. When you see a toilet roll still hanging next to the toilet. Okay. This must have been a lovely area to sit and read a book back in that time period. Lots of books also left in here. And here we end up again in a very small room of the house. I think a child, one of the children of the house, used to sleep in here. You can see there's one single bed left behind to this side. You can see a lot of pictures left over here. This is, this is William and we just saw this tractor. Oh, in the backyard, wow. William with his tractor. And here are pictures of the house. Here he is like with his truck, construction equipment. Here is William again on the field plowing stuff. So he was also a farmer besides having a construction company. Lots of pictures of him. Oh, these are all the same. That's lovely. Here's another one from William proudly standing next to his tractor. And these are all directed to him. International Correspondence School. Again, lots and lots of letters, all directed to William. All still left in here. A little walk-in closet right next to here. Love how they made that. A couple more things. A broken picture of two lovely dogs. I love that it says over here, the good boy. He was a good boy. He was a good boy. He was a good boy. We have to be careful with that one. Lovely cabinet underneath here. Oh, it's not really a cabinet. What's this? Oh, there's a sewing machine in there. There's a sewing machine in there. I definitely want to check out that sewing machine. Always love to see sewing machines inside of these abandoned places. Okay, let's move this to the side. Let's lift this up. How would you perform this? Ah, there we are. And then you would open this up and then the sewing machine could lift out 
and you put this piece back and it rests on top of there. New home. That's a brand I've never seen before. Me neither. New home. That's definitely something from the United States. It says over here in small letters, made in the United States. Wow. What a beautiful piece. Oh, I'm going to put this all back nicely later on in the video. Uh, uh, when we are done filming, I was wondering to say. What's that? Is this a radio? Seems like a radio though. Yeah. This lovely letter box. Oh my gosh. You can even open it up. Look at the inner workings of this machine. There's a speaker in there, so it's definitely a radio. And this right next to here. I have no clue what this is. You don't have any idea, Danny? That's a pinhole. What's a pinhole? It's uh, one of the first uh, cameras for photos. Oh, how would you use this? So you, so would you, no, you put film in here? No, no, no. It film on the other side. It's not film. There was uh, glass or... Be careful, be careful. Yeah, I'm trying because to you, be very careful. Do you want me to open it? Yeah, I will let you show the people what this is exactly. Okay. So. In here, you will put or the, the glass or the metal, depends on which one it is. Ah. And on the side, there's this button. And if you look inside, yeah, it shoots for a second. Ah, there's like a little uh, shutter that opens yeah. and closes. So this is the, the lens. Ah, you can look. And you that. can see from here and here the picture you're gonna take. That's amazing. How old is this device? Uh, almost 200 years. No way. Really? It's from the. Because I remember it's from the 1800s. I found these glass pictures in an abandoned castle, yeah. and they were made with one of these cameras. Uh, it depends, but yes, it couldn't be made with these cameras. That's absolutely oh my amazing. God. Wow, this is one of the lens. This is for a big pinhole, but this was never used. That's Film amazing. Yeah. Gonna give this back to you. Thank you for explaining that, Danny. No I would have never known anything about that camera. He's the cameraman. Yeah, I study photography. The pennies still lying there, or the dimes. This, oh, this is the flash. Yep. Flash from the camera. It's definitely not from the pinhole, but <laughs> that's the digital one. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Lovely. It's also a piece from a camera. Oh, this house is blowing my mind, really. <laughs> it's all the things that are left in here. What's this? Oh, these are earplugs. Look at that. So many vintage things left behind. It's a letter directed to Edward J. Donat. Wow. A quick look in here and all the clothes, as you can see, are still left behind. The socks and everything are still in here. Ooh, look at there in the corner. I think this used to be also a speaker. It has been completely taken apart. Must have definitely been a speaker. Okay, next room, let's go. Last but not least, we have the master bedroom of Mr. William and Mrs. Hildegard. This is where they used to sleep together before, fortunately, Mr. William passed away and Hildegard moved downstairs to sleep down there. As you can see, the bed is still perfect from the time when they lived here together and when they were still fully in love and everything. The wallpaper though has been falling apart, has been crumbling off the walls the last couple of decades that this place has been abandoned and not in use anymore. A little vial up here. I think that's perfume? Yeah, probably. Oh, definitely. Cologne. Ooh. That's not perfume and I don't know what it is. It's like, like kind of odorless. Kind of odorless. <laughs> we have this lamp over here that used to look like a candle holder, but they made it into a lamp face. And again, also those lovely light switches to this side as well, or in this room as well. This sort of looks like a heaven bed, doesn't it? Almost. Yeah, like if you put a little bit Half higher of it. the curtain on top of it. 
<laughs> and even the suitcase is still here. Some blankets in there or some tablecloths, I think these are. Lovely bed, absolutely adore it. I think even the nightdress of Mr. William is still hanging here. And for some reason his tie is also still over there. Oh, nightstand. I love how this piece of wallpaper just fell on here and is literally balancing on top of this, night, of this lamp on the nightstand here. And then in the corner of the room, they also had this fascinating chair standing here, the light next to it. And you can barely not see it, but there's a painting right behind the fallen wallpaper there. Who would these shoes have been from? It's a very big size, so they probably were from Mr. William. Mr. William had size, I cannot see it. There's no size in here. But these were definitely Mr. William's shoes that are lying here. Also, always love to see these files. Not gonna smell this one. Doesn't, doesn't seem like water. Nah, <laughs> definitely doesn't. Okay, <laughs> I should, st should stop smelling everything. Yeah. <sighs> Lots of papers on top of here. All from William. This one is from 1973. And these are things he bought probably. High speed drive. That was probably to fix some of his cars. Here we see also a bill from Jean Dare, the farming equipment company, directed to William in 1973 again for some parts that he ordered. The knitting equipment from Mrs. Hildegard is also still left there. Oh, this one is from Benjamin Franklin, it says on here, 1790. Is this a liquor? First national state. Wow, I think this, uh, there used to be some sort of a liquor inside of there. Okay, and look at this lovely setup that we have to this side. This chair, bureau chair in front of it. And I could sit here, I believe somebody would have watched television on this chair sitting over here. Maybe they watch, oh, this is a reclining chair as well. <laughs> I didn't expect that. And even all the notes and everything are still left on here. September 8, 1961, we have over here. And they actually wrote it for this time, they wrote it right. They are German, they are European. Of course. Yeah. And they write it right. This is how we write it in, in Europe. First the day, then the month, and then the year. But in, I was very surprised in, in the United States, they twist that around. But these people were, of course, German. And even though this is it's an uh, English letter, they still wrote it the way they used to in Germany. And this is the US Army Personnel Center, it says on there. Wow. There's even a couple of pictures still left here of the dogs. What I interest me as well is here we have a key from the house and even the name of the person is still on there. But it's not, it's not the name of, of, of William or Robert or Hildegard. Okay. I was too comfortable on this chair, let's get up again. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Lovely setup. And then a drawer to this side with a mirror still above it. And a couple of pictures up here. This is the Grand Canyon, Danny. Grand Canyon in Arizona. And then we have another picture of the snowy mountain gaps or the snow somewhere here around this area. What a lovely place. A cabinet filled with some pants, some other clothes for when they slept and lived still in this room. about to leave the house and in the midst of everything by going through the backyard we missed this shed over here and here Mr. 
William kept his prized possession, his Lincoln. Link Lincoln, you called, right? Lincoln. Link Lincoln. Okay, I'm assuming you're right. Okay. This is a truly American car, like you can see. It's a real boat. This place, huge. it's enormous. <laughs> if you drive a car like this through Europe, you would get stuck everywhere. Damn, Danny. How could we have missed this during the video? We're both stunned when we saw it. Have a look inside of this beast. I think you have to push the button underneath there. See the button? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, it's locked up. This one's also locked up. Wow, this hood of the car. <laughs> can you look inside? This was Mr. Uh, Mr. William, his workplace as well, as you can see. There's a lot of things inside of here. Lots of cans of paint, lots of cigar boxes up there. Let's see. This calendar is lying here from 1973. Even his jackets are still hanging over here. I think this was from Hildegard, his wife. Oh no, that's his painting jacket, of course. You can see all the smudges on there. Let's see if there are cigars in there. It's very heavy. Ah, of course. <laughs> of course. Yes. What else would you do with a cigar box? Yeah. I even wrote on here screws, hooks, everything. Wow. Absolutely lovely. That's how you would open up the boot? I had no idea. Yeah, the symbol is vertical, not horizontal. That's why I was looking at it. Ah. Amazing find, Danny. Amazing find. The Lincoln of William, his prized possession. So we found out a lot about the family Schubert. They had three children we know, and we know one of the names already, Rupert. We you know where William lived here, we know that Hildegard lived here. And for me, it was a very fascinating place to go through. This is one of those parts of history that interests me. After war, a lot of people migrated to the United States. We saw already the house of a Croatian family, but now we also saw the house of a German family. And this is really piecing history back together. Schubert family, William, Hildegard, Robert, and the other two children, I want to thank you so, so much for watching this week's video. Of course, Danny, thank you again for filming with me. You're welcome. Link is in the description, like usual. Thank you. And if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I want to see more of these documentaries. Write me a nice comment, and there's also a link in the description for Patreon. There you can support us and help us go around the world, because we love doing this. With that all said, I want to thank you so much for watching this week's video. And I'll see you next week in another epic exploration. Bye-bye. Love you. I'm not going to touch my hand. That's dirty. Bye-bye. <laughs>